The January 6th committee has released its final report. It is 845 pages. This document is based on more than 1,000 interviews, emails, text messages, and year and a half long investigation. And this is what they found. They found that evidence has led to an overriding and straightforward conclusion. The central cause of January 6th was one man, and that is former President Donald Trump, whom many others followed. None of the events of January 6th would have happened without him. So let's bring in now former Trump White House Deputy Press Secretary Sarah Matthews. Sarah, uh, by the way, I should say Sarah resigned on January 6th and testified before the January 6th committee. Sarah, good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. This is a, an extensive report, no doubt. The committee places the blame right at the feet of the former President Trump for this insurrection, and they conclude that he should be barred from office. Do you believe that this report is the next step in accountability for the former president, and do you agree that he should be barred from office? I do agree with that assessment. I think that the report shows that this was a very orchestrated effort by Trump and his co-conspirators to try to overturn the election, and that on January 6th, it played out exactly how Donald Trump wanted it to. He sat by and um, watched as the riot unfolded and never once picked up the phone to try to call for help, even when his own VP was under attack. And so I do think that um, he shouldn't hold office ever again. And I hope that this report now, um, you know, that DOJ will have all of the evidence that the committee has collected, will um, go forth and uh, hopefully do something with it. So, Sarah, I'm sure you're surprised, uh, not surprised that you're in here, right? So there is one part in your interview with the committee where you talk about your realization uh, that Trump was saying on January 6th that it was uh, indefensible. What do you say to people, some of your former colleagues or members of the GOP, who still don't see um, what he did was wrong? It is disappointing to see that, you know, some of my former colleagues don't have the same um, opinions on January 6th that I did. I mean, on January 6th, I knew that um, Trump's behavior was indefensible. And at that time, I didn't even have a full scope of the whole picture. And so now seeing everything that the committee has uncovered and truly seeing um, just how much Trump didn't care and didn't, um, it wasn't even that he didn't want to act, uh, or it was that he didn't even want to act. He didn't care about the riot unfolding. And it was indefensible, his behavior that day. And I think even more so his behavior since then. He's never um, felt any remorse for his role in January 6th. And he continues to push his lies that the election was stolen. I want to read some other stuff, but just real quickly, did, was this the final straw for you? Or was there other, was, were there things that led up to this? Or did you at this moment have an epiphany and say, I can't do this any longer? Is that why you resign? It was definitely a slow burn for me after the election. I knew on election night that we were going to lose. I think I saw when Georgia wasn't trending our way that um, it didn't spell a recipe for um, success. And so I knew then um, that we had lost. And okay. I think then the president, um, you know, chose to pursue litigation and everything. And um, I had hoped that once that litigation failed, he would proceed with the peaceful transfer of power. But then when, um, you know, January 6th came about, obviously that did not happen. And so um, it definitely was a slow burn for me after the election. But on January 6th, his behavior was definitely the final straw. Okay, got it. So you told the committee that the former White House press secretary, Kayleigh McEnany, felt uh, uncomfortable promoting the Dominion conspiracy theory and that the president had asked her to talk about that during the interviews. He did request her to do briefings on it as well. Did, uh, but we did not. Why did she feel so uncomfortable talking about Dominion voting conspiracies? Um, I think she knew, as I knew, that there was no evidence to prove um, those conspiracy theories. And so that was something that, you know, she wasn't willing to um, speak about in interviews and um, obviously would not do it from the White House podium, too. And so that was something then that we tried to um, actively avoid the president in those days after the election because he was putting that pressure on her to try to go out there and speak about this. OK, uh, a couple of other things quickly. Did you ever hear anyone tell uh, the president that his theories about Dominion were wrong? 
I was never in the room for that, okay. but I did know that that was something that the lawyers were communicating to him on the campaign side. Okay. The committee has put forward evidence that Trump knew that he lost the election. Your former colleague, Cassidy Hutchinson, uh, told them that Mark Meadows said to her, and I quote here, a lot of times he'll tell me that he lost, but he wants to keep fighting it, and he thinks that there might be enough to overturn the election. Do you think Meadows, should Meadows have pushed back more on the president? I do think so. I think Meadows knows better, and I think that he was one of Trump's biggest enablers in the White House. And, um, you know, it's disappointing given he was in the room and he chose to just, um, you know, allow Trump to pursue these um, crazy conspiracy theories rather than swatting them down. And that's why I think you saw Trump turn to the people that were um, feeding him these conspiracy theories because the folks that were telling him that these weren't true, um, he stopped listening to toward the end of his administration. Okay, just real quickly, um, this the person that the committee identified here, this Trump attorney, um, this known pro-Trump attorney named Kenneth um, Chessbro, right, as being the original architect of the fake elector spot. Did you hear anything about that? I did not. Okay. Yeah, that was not a name that I was familiar with. Okay, uh, let me make sure that that's all I want to ask you. Um, and then there's Jack Smith, who is a special counsel. Have you offered testimony uh, to in that investigation? Or have you heard from the investigators? No, I have not. Um, they have not reached out to me. All right. Sarah Matthews, thank you very much. I appreciate you coming on.